In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different watercolor techniques just to have you um, a better understanding of the of watercolor and how you can use it to create your background in your pieces. So with watercolor, you really don't need a whole lot. You just need like a little bit. Uh, my yellow was dried up, so I just have the two different color blues and a red. Um, and one of my blues was kind of yucky, so I had to squeeze out all the yucky stuff. I don't want the brown goo. Um, so watercolors, you just add water to it. The more water you have, the more it is uh, transparent. The less water you have, uh, the more it is kind of a thicker water. So the first technique I'm going to show you is wet on wet. So I'm going to use the paintbrush to just wet the paper before I even paint it. I'm only going to wet where I want to paint. And you can see that I can make lines, but the lines kind of bleed out. And if I try to make lines that are right next to each other, they blend together really bad. Um, so not only do they bleed outwards into the water, but they also blend together. And then when I try to overlap them, they mix together um, quite a bit. The next technique is um, wet on dry. So Here's my blue line. I don't have my paper wet underneath it. Here's my red line, wet next to wet, also still bleeds. The, the colors tend to be a little bit more um, vibrant with dry paper underneath it, but they blend together uh, no matter what because they are um, both wet. So both of the wet pigments bleed into each other. They also, when you try to overlap them, if they're both wet, um, they still blend. So they still create um, a mixture, as you can see here. I get a lot more blue as I go through. On the left side of my paper, I'm gonna paint wet uh, on dry, but I'm gonna allow my paint to dry before I paint next to it. So this is dry next to dry, uh, or wet next to dry, I'm sorry, wet paint next to dry paint. Uh, so I usually just use a hair dryer to make sure it's dry. Um, it doesn't take very long. Make sure there's not any standing water because the hair dryer will blow the water around. Um, it, you just want it to be kind of damp as you dry it off. And then once it's dry, we'll give it a minute. I'm going to paint the red next to the blue, just like I did in the other two. But you'll see that because the blue has dried, uh, the red does not bleed into it. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to dry it, uh, but I do think that the hair dryer makes things go a lot faster. You could let it dry overnight and come back the next day, um, but you'll know if it's dry if it feels dry to the touch. It's really important that the paper doesn't feel wet um, before you paint next to it if you're using this technique because if it feels wet, the fibers are still probably damp and they will still pull the wet paint into them. So now my blue is dry. I'm going to paint my red next to it and there is no bleed whatsoever. It's a nice crisp line and it's really vibrant. And then I can paint my red over the top of my blue and there is no mixture whatsoever. Uh, watercolor is transparent so you should see the blue underneath it but the more I add red layers on top uh, the less the blue is visible because I'm adding more layers. So the first one was wet on wet next to wet. The next one was wet on dry next to wet, and the last one was wet on dry next to dry. All three of those